Look at this world map and now look at Greenland. It looks huge, almost the size of Africa. But here's the thing, Greenland is only about 2.1 million square kilometers in area and Africa is about 30.37 million square kilometers in area. That is about 14 times the size of Greenland. Yet, in all maps and atlases including Google Maps and Bing Maps, Greenland appears misleadingly gigantic. And this is how Greenland has been presented on the maps for centuries throughout history. Now the reason why Greenland appears so big on maps is because of something called as projection. As we all know that Earth is a sphere, except for the ones who believe that Earth is flat. And all the maps are represented on a rectangular piece of paper. To represent a spherical Earth onto a 2D map, cartographers use projection. While doing so, they try to maintain four properties of the object. Area, shape, distance and direction. But it is impossible to maintain all four. For example, if you try to maintain shape and direction, you will end up introducing distortions in area and distance. The simplest example of this is when you're trying to flatten an orange peel onto a table without breaking it. You'll end up stretching or tearing parts of the peel. Now the most widely used projection in our maps is the Mercator projection, which is named after a brilliant Flemish cartographer, Gerardus Mercator, who came up with the projection in the year 1569. How this projection works is, you take a hollow cylinder and put it over the globe, and then project the points on the globe onto the cylinder. Then you open up the cylinder and it gives you a new map of the world. Now Mercator wasn't trying to deceive anyone. His map was made for sailors, people navigating ships across oceans. His projection made straight line navigation easy by preserving angles. That's great for maritime explorers. But here's the catch. Mercator projection maintains shape and direction but distorts area and distance. The Mercator projection massively stretches land the further you move from the equator. The closer you get to the poles, the more stretched things become. So while countries near the equator look pretty normal, things up north like Greenland get blown way out of proportion. A place like Ecuador or Kenya near the equator will appear about the right size. UK which is almost halfway between the equator and the poles get stretched a bit slightly and places like Greenland get blown way out of proportion. In fact, Antarctica becomes so big that it can't even fit on the map. Yet Mercator projection stuck around, it became the standard not just on nautical charts but in school textbooks, atlases and classroom walls for centuries. You might wonder why didn't anyone fix this? Well, it wasn't just about accuracy, it was also about power. During the age of exploration and empire building, Europe wanted to see itself as important. The maps made using the Mercator projection made the European countries seem larger in size than they were in reality. For example, India, which was the colony of Britain, is almost 13 times the size of Britain. And Brazil, which was the colony of Portugal, is almost 92 times the size of Portugal. But the Mercator projection made Britain, Portugal and other colonial powers appear bigger than their actual size. This helped in shaping perception and legitimizing colonial claims. Maps became tools of imperial power and map makers were often working under royal commissions or colonial powers. So they were not neutral. The Mercator projection was used widely and became a standard across European dominated education and culture. And it created a distinctly Eurocentric image of the globe. Now this is interesting, back in the 1500s and 1600s, explorers hadn't seen much of the Arctic, so they kind of filled in the blanks with imagination. For example, an imaginary island named Frisland appeared on dozens of maps from the 16th to the 17th centuries, often just south of Greenland. Its inclusion is largely attributed to the so-called Zeno map, based on the fabricated account by Niccolo and Antonio Zeno in the year 1558. They were two Venetian brothers who claimed to have sailed in the North Atlantic and recorded new lands. Crocaland and Estito Land were two other famous phantom islands that kept appearing in maps of that time, whose existence was based on either travellers' tales or pure imagination. Some of these phantom islands even had towns and flags drawn on them. It was map fan fiction. And then there was Inventio Fortunata, a mysterious 14th century medieval book describing an Arctic full of whirlpools, magnetic mountains, and mystical lands. Even though the book is lost, its influence remained, especially in the maps by Mercator himself. Gerardus Mercator, aware of the book only through references and summaries, incorporated some of these legends into his famous 1595 map of the Arctic. And his depiction included four swirling rivers flowing into the pole and a massive magnetic mountain exactly at the pole's center. So Greenland wasn't just oversized, it was surrounded by fantasy. Over the years, the Mercator map became the global standard. It was used in schools, in atlases and in books. The Mercator map became the map. It was easy to print, useful for navigation and nobody really questioned it until they did. In the 1970s, a German historian named Arno Peters called out the problem. He introduced the Gaul Peters projection, which preserved area. On the Gaul Peters map, continents and countries were depicted in the correct proportional sizes. 
but the map significantly distorted shapes, making countries appear elongated or squashed. On this map, Greenland shrinks to its true, more modest size. Africa looked massive as it should and South America expanded. The world looked different because it was finally accurate. But the map caused a stir. Some accused Peters of politicizing cartography. While his supporters, including several church and development organizations, embraced it for its message of global equality and fairness. Over the years, several projections have come up. For example, the Winkle Triple Projection, which minimizes distortions in all four properties. Area, size, shape and direction, but doesn't preserve any one property. It offers a good overall compromise and was actually adopted by National Geographic in 1998 for all its world maps. Then there was the Orthograph, a projection so mathematically precise that in 2016, it was awarded the Good Design Grand Award in Japan and began appearing in Japanese high school geography textbooks. Okay, now let's talk about Google Maps. Even Google Maps uses a variant of the Mercator projection known as Web Mercator, which means it stretches Greenland as you zoom out and it significantly exaggerates the size of landmasses as they get further from the equator. But why does it use Mercator? Well, the main reason for using Web Mercator is its practicality for online mapping services. The Web Mercator divides the world into a regular rectangular grid. This makes it easy for computers to cut maps into square tiles and efficiently load and display only what the user needs. This grid-based approach also ensures seamless panning and zooming, making the user experience smooth and scalable everywhere except the polar regions. At the same time, it also preserves angles locally, meaning that shapes of small areas like streets and buildings appear accurate. This is crucial for navigation and street-level views. And it's not just Google Maps, Apple Maps, Bing Maps, OpenStreetMaps, they all use Web Mercator. There were some clever folks who built this interesting website called True Size Off. So this website lets you drag countries around the world to see how big they really are when placed closer to the equator. Check out what happens when I drag Greenland or Africa. It shrinks to its original size. You can give it a try and drag different countries to different places around the globe. Just to get an idea of how distorted the places on 2D maps are. It is important to understand that no map is perfect, but all maps make choices. Choices about what to preserve and what to distort. And these choices can have real impacts on how people view the world. That brings us to the end of the video. My name is Ajay and this is Alive and Curious. And if you like the video and for more such stories from around the world, please like, share and subscribe to the channel. You may also consider becoming a member of the Alive and Curious community which will give you access to the exclusive perks. Thank you. See you in the next one.